Follow along, please, if you will. I have several portions of Scripture we're going to look at today, and I'll try to go slow enough that you can turn with me. And hopefully you have a pencil and a piece of paper as well to, to take some notes and go home and check it out. Um, we never ask you to believe everything we say here. Just listen to what we have to say. and Hopefully we can provoke you to emulation to go home and study the Word of God and find out if it's true or not. Amen. That's what we want to do. And I don't take it lightly. Every, every Sunday morning I look out at the congregation and I am blessed. I am a blessed pastor. Uh, folks, they come and then they come back and then they keep coming back. And, 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 I, and I, I just look up to heaven and thank the Lord for trusting us here at the Faith Baptist Church to add people like you to this congregation. It's wonderful. You come to get fed and that's what I want to do this morning. I want to try to feed you. And Brother Dana... Uh, had a good theme in his in his music program this morning about God revealing himself through creation, through uh, conscience, and through the Word of God. And we may touch on that just a little bit today, but if not, maybe tonight. Uh, but um, we want to talk about uh, uh, revealing the righteousness of God today. Revealing the righteousness of God. And I, again, I hope everyone has your Bibles. And we're going to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. You know these verses. I want to read several that you're familiar with and maybe some that you're not familiar with. The Bible says in uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. And if you're, and in this particular verse right here, it's anyone, the Greek is anyone other than a Jew. It's a Gentile, anyone other than a Jew. It's to the Jew first and also to the Greek, also to everyone. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is to everyone, not just a select few. It's to the whole world, and we thank God for that. If we didn't hear the gospel, you and I would be lost. Those of us that are saved, if we never heard a clear presentation of the gospel, we could not believe Christ and have his righteousness imputed to our account and be saved and go to heaven. So thank God for the power of the gospel of Christ. The Bible said in verse 17, for therein, that is within the gospel. And anytime you preach the gospel, you need to reveal the righteousness of God. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Uh, it's so easy for preachers to get up here and say some real good things and then hammer on the gospel saying the gospel works, the gospel's good. But how many times have you been sitting in a congregation that no one's ever explained the gospel? Well, the gospel's good, but what is the gospel? The gospel's right, but what is the gospel? Why do you say that a man has to hear the gospel if no one ever explains the gospel? The Bible says the the... the I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, therein within the gospel, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, we understand the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, and so for anyone to pervert the gospel or to distort the gospel is beyond devastation. Is, and, and what brought this message about, I think, probably because of the political uh, arena that we're in today and watching everything on TV and, and, and people coming up to me saying, well, they say they're a Christian or this one says they're a Christian. Well, everyone that names the name of Christ is not a Christian. It's, it's not a Christian. Uh, a particular denomination we had run uh, about eight years ago claimed to be in a Christian camp. And that mainline denomination that he was in denies the deity of Christ, denies uh, a literal heaven, the abode of God, denies a literal burning hell or a lake of fire. Uh, totally deny the scripture and then they go as far as to write their own scripture and say that this is not enough and they produced a, uh, a book called The Pearl of Great Price and uh, uh, other books to try to enhance and tell you that it supersedes the word of God. That's, that's not Christian. That's, that's not Christian, brother. It's, it's just not Christian. And then on the other hand, you have people that say, well, they must be a Christian because they love God and they pray. Well, let me read some scripture to you. Uh, the Bible says over, take your Bibles, go with me again to Matthew, Matthew chapter 15. Hopefully you'll follow along. Follow along. 
there's some sweet people walking the face of this earth that are not naming the same uh, Jesus of the Jesus of the Bible. Uh, to deny the Lord Jesus Christ, to deny what he says in his word is a literal hell, and to add anything to Calvary, to add anything to what Jesus Christ did on Calvary for salvation of mankind is not a true gospel. And people are preaching another Jesus and another gospel. Now this is this is serious. This is serious. It's nothing to nothing to play at, and it's not a sermon today just to start bashing people. We're just looking at the gospel and the righteousness of God revealed through the gospel. And along the way, we're going to pick up. Uh, hopefully, you'll by knowing the truth, you'll you'll be alerted to what's always false. Uh, it'll, it'll something will go off in your mind, and you say, "Well, that's not the gospel." We, we, have, we have people right here in Milton, Florida, even catering to, uh, uh, to people that are not preaching the gospel, preaching a, no, a false gospel, preaching another Christ, uh, adding things to the gospel of Christ. And when that happens, the Bible says, did I say crossful? Oh, I didn't. I said Milton, didn't I? Okay. All right. Just make sure I'm right. I know it. I know it. I'm, I'm not in Tennessee mode today. All right. I thought I said crossful. Because uh, I was, I pastored up there for like 21 years, and I can't help but sometimes relate back to some instances that happened up there. But anyway, I'm in Matthew chapter number 15. Matthew chapter number 15. Uh, the disciples became offended, or the Pharisees became offended at what the Lord said in verse number 12. Verse number 13 of Matthew chapter 15, the Bible said, But he answered, the Lord answered, and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, what's going to happen? Both shall fall in the ditch. Did you know that there's religious people today making a, a two-fold child of hell out of people more so than themselves? They're on their way to hell. In the Bible, the Lord Jesus said this. I didn't say it. You're making a two-fold more child of hell by feeding them false doctrine, giving them just enough religion to make, them, uh, to make them look, look like they're a, 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 an upstanding, fine young man in the community. But you're making a two-fold child of hell out of them by giving them false gospel. Why? But they're dependent on something they can do rather than what Christ has already done. On the, on, and this is very important. This is very, very, very important. If the blind lead the blind, both are going to fall in the ditch. The Bible makes it very clear that there is one gospel and not another. That is one gospel that, that reveals the righteousness of God, brings salvation. Go over to Galatians, if you will. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Um, you can't... You, you can't govern what comes out of a man's mouth, but you can govern... If it's, within, if it's within your means and within your power, you can govern who you have in here. Amen? You follow what I'm saying? You can, you can govern who you have behind a pulpit. You knowing the truth can make a choice on who you're going to sit under and listen to. You, you can. All right, now Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse number 6. The Bible said in verse 6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. Now, you understand that. He's not contradicting himself right here. He was talking about the gospel that reveals the righteousness of God. There's only one. There's only one. But people are claiming that they have a gospel and you and I both know that that is totally another gospel. That's not the gospel of the Bible. So it says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. Now, go from Galatians chapter 1 
to um, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I told you I'm going to bring you to, to, to several portions of Scripture. We're looking at a gospel that reveals the righteousness of God. If it does not reveal the righteousness of God and the righteousness of God imputed to the sinner without that sinner's merit, without anything he can do, then it's not the gospel. It's not a gospel. It's not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 4, there is one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. There's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Now, we're talking about one salvation. One salvation, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. But um, we could take verse 5 totally out of context and say, and we could go back in Scripture and say, well, the Lord uh, Jesus taught in the book of Matthew and also the book of John concerning John the Baptist, that John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water, but there's one coming after me that is mightier than I. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Yeah, so, so we, we understand that there are several baptisms. We understand in Romans 6 there's a Christian baptism. It's identification. It's when a person gets saved. Matthew chapter number 28 describes that. When a person trusts Christ as his Savior, he follows the Lord in believer's baptism. It's identification. He pictures the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And it's by immersion. But we get to Ephesians chapter number 4. It says one faith and one baptism... We're talking about salvation. That one baptism has to be 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Has to be. No dancing around it. It has to be baptism of the Holy Spirit. Every time you see, every time you see the word baptism in Scripture, don't automatically think of water. Baptism, the word, the definition of baptism means to be placed under. So when I trust Christ, I'm placed under His authority. Did you know that uh, the Hebrew children were baptized into Moses, yet not one drop of water ever touched them as they went through the Red Sea. They identified. They identified with Moses. They identified with the repentance that John was preaching. And then, of course, we find that baptism in Ephesians 4 means Holy Spirit baptism. That's the one baptism. And unless you've experienced that baptism, you've never been born again. Never been born again. What's the evidence of that baptism? Him in you bearing witness with your spirit. The Word of God bearing witness with you. It's not tongues. There's a church right up the street right here saying that it's a tongues. That's evidence of your salvation. That's not true. Especially in the context they put it in today, which is nothing in the world but babbling. You say, preacher, you shouldn't be talking about things like that. I am. I am. And to let it in is not good. To let it in is not good. It's not good. It's not holy. It's not right. It's not, it's not healthy. To let, to, to, to let, to let it in your ranks. Uh, there's a church right up the street that says that you have to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus to go to heaven. That's nowhere to be found in the scripture. Nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found in scripture. Milton City water or even that pure upstate New York water can never wash anyone's sins away. Never. It's the blood of Christ. One faith, one baptism. That's the Holy Spirit baptism. And when you trust Christ, you're placed under His authority. You be careful about people preaching another gospel. Turn over to 2 Corinthians 11. Let me show you something. You say, well, they're such good people. I remember I had some good people come to the door probably the sweetest people that I've met. You know, if Baptists could be as sweet as some of these cults in their personality, you know what? Anybody, I'm going to go ahead and say, anybody ever come in contact with Seventh-day Adventist people? Sweet people. Come to my, they come to my door um, when I was up in Tennessee and they were just so kind. 
They're so kind. They, they are just kind people. It's their demeanor to be kind. They, they, they're real prevalent. Brother Donnell, you know that probably half of Tennessee Temple worked at McGee Bakery. Seventh-day Adventist owns McGee Bakery up there in Chattanooga. And um, uh, they just treated us good, and they were good. Uh, and they left some literature, and uh, they, they wanted a donation for the literature they left at the house. And because they were so sweet, where's my wife? God love her. Yeah, now she's making, she, oh, she's going. She knows what she did. She gave him a little, little offering for some donation. I said, baby, we can't, we can't support that. She said, I know, but they were so sweet. So I had to chase them down. You know, I had to chase them up the road and say, you, you guys are probably some of the nicest guys I ever met in my life, but I cannot give you money for this literature. You see, they're, 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 their doctrine. They, they're the ones that puts a big sign up on, on Interstate 40 that said if you worship on Sunday, you've taken the mark of the beast. That's the same outfit that does that. They're the same outfit that denies a literal hell. They're the same outfit that, that, that says you've got to keep the Sabbath, keep Saturday, and keep the law, and eat the right kind of foods in order to go to heaven. So what are they doing to Calvary? Making it of none effect. So... So when, when I preach, I'm, I'm putting all of this in so you won't say, well, that preacher down there at Faith Baptist Church is just a mean old fella. He's just against everybody. Well, I'm going to tell you something. When the blind leads the blind, what's going to happen? They're both going to fall in the ditch. So why can't we be sweet and kind giving out the gospel? Giving out the truth. You say you have the truth. Why can't you be as sweet as some of the cults can, are? Don't you think that would work a lot better? Why do, you think the, why do you think the devil has them dress up in white shirts and ties and ride bicycles? Instead of greasy, long, stringy hair and, and earringed and tattooed up and going to your door. That's J.C. Why, but why, do you think, why do you think the devil will dress up a fellow because he knows the world's going to accept a, a, a particular figure? You know, and they're as lost as a goose in a snowstorm. They don't have the truth. They don't even know the truth. They don't know the truth, brother. And so if, give it, but if you can give the truth in a tender manner, are you in 2 Corinthians chapter 11? That's where I want to go. Would to God, you could bear with me a little in my folly. And indeed, bear with me, for I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. I, I just, I can hear Paul. Please bear with me a little bit, my folly. I mean, you're, you're mine. I, I have, and Paul even calls it my gospel. You know, he knows it's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, but he calls it my gospel. And he loves those folks so much. He loves them so much. He said, I'm jealous over you. With a godly jealousy. Yeah, I've espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I, here's, what I'm, here's what's bothering me, Paul said. I fear. I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The simplicity that is in Christ. If we preach Christ the way he is supposed to be preached, he's going to be revealed as the only way to heaven, the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God imputed to the guilty sinner's account. And that's the only way God's going to allow you to heaven. But the gospel will bring that about. You see, the Bible says in verse 4, for if he that cometh preacheth another are y'all with me on this here another Jesus whom we have not preached how can I preach another Jesus Jesus plus water baptism Jesus plus tongues Jesus plus keeping the Sabbath Jesus plus doing anything in the flesh to gain audience with the Holy God when I've done that I've made the cross of Christ of none effect but if I preach Jesus and Jesus alone, God reconciled the world into himself in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It reduces you down to a state of humility and it exalts Almighty God. It takes you out of the equation of your salvation. That's hard to do. That's hard to get a man to think that he's nothing. Without me, Jesus said what? You can do nothing. For, for, for a preacher to get up, or a speaker, or a teacher, or anybody, or a soul winner to get up and try to convince men and women that there's nothing, not one thing in them that they could ever, ever, ever offer a holy God. Nothing. Because from the top of your head to the sole of your foot, you're like a putrefying sore. You can't even be mollified with ointment. And for, for someone to get up and say, you don't have anything in you to offer God. Well, your natural reaction, you don't know me. Who do you think you are? Well, if I was preaching anything else, I'd be preaching another Jesus. You see that? Another Jesus whom we have not... Let's finish out verse 4 whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Need to perk up. The blind lead the blind. Both of them is going to fall in a ditch. So with so many today, with so many people today, and everybody's candidate that's running, I've been watching, I, it almost makes you want to cut the TV off. With everybody running, everybody's a Christian. One fella gets up and says, I'm a Presbyterian, can you believe it? The other one gets up and claims this, and the other one gets up and claims that. Everybody claiming to be a Christian, somebody's wrong. Did you know in Milton, Florida, drive up Highway 90? Drive up Highway 90. You got, you got this corner, starting at this corner right here, Faith Baptist Church. Across the street, you got Vineyard. Go up the street a little bit ways, you got an apostolic outfit. You got this one this way. You got that one that way. You got right on up the street, you got an assembly. Right up this street, you got, you got a, 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 yeah, yeah, let me, let me tell you something, folks. Let me tell you something. You figure it out. Somebody's wrong. Not everybody's right. If Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, if he's the only way and there's only one gospel, anybody else that preaches another gospel, let him be damned or accursed. That's what it says. Somebody's wrong. So, here it is. God has given you a mind. Am I going to claim up, stand up and say, I'm the only one? No, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to tell you something, though. I'm going to tell you something. God made you in His image. He gave you a body, mind, and spirit. And you've got a mind. And you've got understanding. Somebody came up to me the other day and said, I, I'm, I don't know if I have it in me. That I have maybe, may, may have a physical problem, they said. And I don't know if I have the ability to understand. And I said, let me take you over to a fella that was from the land of uh, Gadara. And when he met the Lord Jesus Christ, all of that craziness left him when he stood in the very presence of Christ. God began to put the wires back together. If God can get his mind where he can make an intelligent decision concerning Christ, he can you too. He can, you too. And so my, my, to finish my statement is God has given you a mind. He's given you the Word. The Word is of no private interpretation. You can open it and you can read for yourself. And you can make an intelligent decision. Come now and let us reason together based on what the Lord said. Is He, in fact, the righteousness of God? With so many people today preaching a false gospel, people are actually considering them as a legitimate choice. A false gospel, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've stood at deathbeds and seen what a false gospel can do to people. A false gospel takes people up to their deathbed still crying for mercy. 
steal, crying for, I've seen it. I've seen it, and, and the whole time trying to explain that Christ is the righteousness of God. See, the gospel is the good news. Good news, good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything about Christ is gospel. But the crux of the gospel is how that God became a man. In the Bible, if you want to see a perfect picture of the righteousness of God, you can go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And you can go to verse number 19 and it'll say, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed to us the word of reconciliation. That's what we're doing right now. We're... We're giving you the word of reconciliation. All right, now God became a man. God became a man. And all, just all of the sin here, what, 200 people here. All of the sin, just take your sin and multiply it by 7 billion. And then go on back to Adam from all generations up to the last man born. All sin was laid on the person of Christ. God made Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, God made Christ to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. All of the sin was laid on Christ, and Almighty God bruised Christ, judged Christ, until the wrath of God was appeased. God said, I'm satisfied. My son died for your sins. That's the gospel. That, that's it. He died for your sins. And in doing so, when he rose again without sin, and he's at the right hand of the Father, did you know what he did? He moved that enmity, that, this enmity that was between me and God. He took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and reconciliation has already, already happened. Why don't you believe it? That's the message, is believe it. I can come as close as I want to through the throne of grace because of the reconciliatory work of Christ. Because of what he did for me. Peace was made. Reconciliation was made. All right, now, God said, in 2 Corinthians, and I'm going back just a little bit, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that he would not impute to you your sin, your, trans, your, your trespasses. Why, why will God not impute to you your trespasses? Because he imputed them to Christ. Christ paid for them. He won't impute them to you. If God ever imputed to you your sins and trespasses, You'd be doomed and damned. But he imputed them to Christ, and Christ bore that, 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 that sin, and he, he paid the penalty for that sin. And so the message today is receive it. To as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. The moment that I see myself as going to hell and, and deserving to go to hell, and realizing that God became a man and took my place and satisfied the demands of a holy God, the moment I believed that, you know what God did? God imputed to me. Imputed means he laid it to my account. He'll lay it to your account, the righteousness of his son, and tells you you can go to heaven. Is that good or what? That's worth getting excited about. Now my question is, have you ever trusted Christ as your Savior? There's a, there's a lot of Gospels out there. But there's only one Gospel. There's only one Gospel that reveals the righteousness of God. That's the Gospel of Christ. Christ only. Christ only. Let's stand to our feet. I hope that um, 
you didn't think today's message was a, a, an attack on an individual. But let me tell you what I hate. I hate with a passion a false gospel. I hate it with a passion. At my personal testimony, I was involved in religion that handed me that false gospel. And there was, that void was still there. And when I finally came to the truth of the knowledge of Christ, God opened my understanding. I've never been the same since. Never will be the same. We know we're going to heaven because of what Christ did. Not what you did, what Christ did for you. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for loving us when we were so unlovely. Thank you for a gospel. A gospel, dear God, that reveals the righteousness of God. You said, Lord, in the book of Romans chapter 10... In verse number four, that Jesus Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Thank you for that promise and thank you for that truth. Bless, I pray, this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen.